Uh, Laupa friends, uh, my name is Sharin, Sharin Shemgono. So first and foremost, I would like to say Happy Rizwan to all the Baha'is in the world. Hope you're having a great time with your loved ones. So today on my behalf, I would like to share a little about the 9th day of Rizwan. So without further ado, let's go. So the beginning, beginning the April of 27 until the end of April 28, Baha'is around the world will celebrate the 9th day of Rizwan which is a festival of joy and unity. Rizwan is a 12-day festival that commemorates the beginning of the Baha'i faith in the year 1863. Three of the 12 days of Rizwan have special meaning in them. The first, the ninth, and the 12th day, which happens to be the last day of the King of Festival, which falls respectively on April 19th, April 27th, and May 1st of 2020. The ninth day of Rizwan honors a historic event in the Baha'i faith. In April of 1863, Baha'u'llah, the founder of the Baha'i faith, learned that he had been officially exiled from the Ottoman Empire. At the same time, both the Persian and the Ottoman governments opposed and feared the rapid spread of Baha'u'llah's teachings, so they reacted with violence against his followers. Unfortunately, at least 20,000 innocent people died as a result. However, the Ottoman government was unable to slow the spread of the Baha'i faith and so they banished the founder and his followers. Baha'u'llah and his followers ended up near the eastern bank of the Tigris River in the Garden of Rizwan. On their ninth day in the garden, the flooding Tigris River receded enough so that Baha'u'llah's family could cross the river and join him. This reunification of Baha'u'llah's family inspired the, sibling, the symbolic meaning of the ninth day of Rizwan. So friends, like all holidays, Baha'is must abstain from work and school on this holiday. They should also celebrate with joyous gatherings filled with prayer and readings from the Baha'i writings. So that was my sharing on the 9th day of Rizwan. Hope you guys understood and enjoyed it. So once again, happy Rizwan guys! Papa friends, my name is Sharin and today I'm going to talk about the 9th day of Rizwan. So Ridwan means paradise and the festival got its name from the garden of Ridwan over the Tigris river of Sat Baghdad. So this is where Baha'u'llah remained for 12 days at 1863 after he was forced to leave Baghdad by the Ottoman Empire. Okay. So during these 12 days, Baha'u'llah received many visitors who came to help him and his family prepare for the journey to Constantinople. In this present of his sons, Baha'u'llah announced, telling that all he, all he was, he whom God shall manifest, shall make manifest, the menacing figure repeatedly mentioned by the Bab. Before him, many others had claimed to be the menacing of the Baha'i faith, but only Baha'u'llah's claim was successful, and his followers became known as Baha'is. So, the family of Baha'u'llah was not able to join him until the ninth day because the Tigris river had risen due to the rains and travel to the garden of Ridwan was difficult on the 12th day they all left Ridwan and started their journey to Constantinople so the 12 days of Baha'u'llah in the garden of Ridwan are now celebrated as the Ridwan festival also known as the most great festival and king of festivals and, also, and it is the most holy festival of the Baha'i faith so I hopefully all the Baha'is in this world are celebrating the one. So that's all for me for today. Papa friends. Hari ini saya ingin berkongsi tentang pengumuman Baha'u'llah di Taman Ridwan. Pada 22 April 1863, Baha'u'llah telah berangkat dari rumahnya ke Taman Ridwan. Hari itu bandar Baghdad telah menyaksikan satu keriuhan yang luar biasa. Penduduk Baghdad daripada semua lapisan wanita dan lelaki, kaya dan miskin, tua dan muda, golongan arif, ahli-ahli keluarga diraja, gawai-pegawai kerajaan, pedagang dan pekerja buruh dan sahabat-sahabatnya telah berkerumunan di hadapan rumahnya dan sepanjang jalan Sehingga ke tepi Sungai Tenggeris Ada yang memanjat bumbung rumah-rumah agar dapat melihat dengan lebih jelas senario yang berlaku di sana Ada antara mereka yang menangis dengan kuat 
Dan ada pula yang meluahkan rasa sedih mereka. Selama 10 tahun, Haula telah mencurahkan kasih sayangnya dan semangat kemuliaannya ke atas mereka dan menjadi tempat mengadu dan pembimbing mereka. Apabila Bahaula muncul di halaman rumahnya, para sahabatnya yang pen, penuh sedih dan tidak dapat menahan rasa duka menyarap di hadapan baginda, Haula telah berdiri ber, 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 beberapa lama di sana dan mengeluarkan kata-kata untuk menyenangkan hati mereka dan memberi jaminan bahawa akan melayan mereka secara individu di Taman Ridua nanti. Bahawalah kemudian menuju ke arah pintu keluar. Tiba-tiba, dari kalangan orang ramai yang berkerumuni di sana, seorang kanak-kanak tel- telah berlari ke hadapan dan berpaut pada jubahnya lalu meraung dan dengan suara kecilnya membuat Rayuan kepada baginda Supaya jangan meninggalkan mereka Ramai yang melihat peristiwa ini tidak dapat menahan titisan air mata Dan perasaan sedih mereka menjadi sangat makin perut Di samping di, di sepanjang jalan daripada rumahnya Ramai yang bukan pengikutnya juga telah meluahkan kesedihan mereka Dengan amat ketal Masing-masing telah berasap-asap untuk mendekati baginda. Ada yang menyarap di hadapannya untuk mendapat berkatnya. Ada yang ingin mendengar kata-katanya. Manakala ada yang berhasrat menentu tangannya atau sekadar melihat wajahnya. Seorang wanita Parsi dari golongan atasan yang merupakan bukan seorang pengikutnya. Telah berasap-asap ke hadapan yang baringkan bayi dan didukung di hadapan bahawlah dan merayu agar baginda berkati anaknya. Peristiwa yang serupa ini telah berlarutan sehingga bahawlah sampai ke tebing sungai Tigris. Selepas itu, bahawlah menaiki perahu bersama-sama Abdul Baha, Mizah Midi, Muhammad Ali dan Mizah Akjan ke Taman Ridwan. Mereka sampai di sana pada waktu tengah hari dan sebaik saja bahawalah masuk ke dalam taman itu seruan solat kedengaran seolah-olah meraihkan kedatangannya. Pada hari pertama di Taman Ridwan, bahawalah secara terbuka mengumumkan kepada para sahabatnya yang berkumpul di sana mengenai kedudukan sebenarnya dan misinya iaitu baginda ia adalah dia yang akan dijelmakan Tuhan Seperti mana dijanjikan oleh Sang Suci Bab Selain itu, bahawalah juga telah mengumumkan bahawa Kedatangan Baginda telah diramalkan dalam semua kitab suci zaman lampau Pengumuman bahawalah disambut dengan gembira oleh penganut-penganut Bab yang hadir Kesedihan mereka bertukar menjadi kekeriangan Sebenarnya ada antara para sahabat bahawa yang telah pun menjangka akan pengumuman ini kerana mereka telah melihat petanda-petanda ke arah itu dalam ucapan-ucapan bahawa semenjak beberapa bulan sebelum ini dan juga kerana mereka telah perhatikan suatu perubahan ketara dan tingkah laku bahawa pada hari baginda meninggalkan rumahnya di Baghdad Baginda mula memakai jenis tas yang tinggi yang berbeza daripada tas yang biasa dipakai. Para sahabatnya dilimpahi keriangan dengan pengumuman bahawa walaupun pada hakikatnya Baginda akan meninggalkan mereka ke suatu tempat yang jauh selama 12 hari mereka telah meraihkan bersama-sama bahawa di Taman Ridwan. Dalam satu law yang diwayukan olehnya Bahawa merujuk hari pertama di Ridwan, Taman Ridwan Apabila baginda telah mengumumkan misinya Sebagai hari yang paling bahagia Dan telah menyuruh pengikut-pengikutnya yang memperingati Hari itu dengan riang gembira Kini tempoh 12 hari dari April 21 hingga 2 Mei Disambut penuh gembira oleh komuniti Bahai di serata dunia 
sebagai perayaan grade 1. Love apa? Hello, for friends. Wishing you a joyous grade one to the Baha'is of the community and around the world. Today, I'm gonna share you a story about a never-ending stack of Lego bricks. So, I'm gonna talk about the analogy between the stacks of Lego bricks and the progressive revolution. So, in this particular story, they belong. There is two characters, which is Kim and Wendy. So, on a fine day. After accomplishing every duties of house chores, Wendy and Kim decided to have a meaningful conversation over a cup of tea. So basically, as we go in deep into their conversations, we could see that Wendy is a new believer of the Baha'i faith, and she was having a misconceptions where she thought the Baha'is believed that Jesus wasn't the only one, that God sent others like him. So as Wendy was sharing the uh, understanding on the Baha'i faith, Kim knew that there was something wrong about her understanding on a new faith, which we all know. So then Kim decided why not she found find a different way of explaining to her in order for her to understand. So that is when she found a stack of um, bricks of Lego, colorful Legos on the side of the table. So that is when this analogy came in, where Kim took a piece of Lego brick and asked a friend Wendy, "What do you understand about this, and can you explain its characteristics and its functions of it?" So then, as you can see, Kim asked a question to Wendy. So the question was, "What was his characteristics? What was his fundamental function and stuff?" So then. Uh, Bendy was like she was looking in a very puzzled and clueless manner towards the Lego brick, and she answered, "Well, you can build things with them, and its color is red." So then, basically, after um, Bendy answering a question, Kim asked, "Is this red color essential to its function?" She said that the shape is more important than the color of it. For speaking about um, the shape of it, Wendy described it was a plastic block, brick block, that has six sides. And Wendy said four of the sides were smooth, and top has little knobs, and bottom is hollow, allows it to be stacked on top and on top. So that is when. As Mandy understand fully about the functions of the block, that is when Kim explained to Mandy that these blocks represents the prophecy um, where the progressive revelations occur, where Kim took another blue block, a brick block, and stacked it on top of the red one that she had earlier. And Kim explained to Mandy, saying that these blocks represents the process of mankind's spiritual evolution and it continues because God sends messengers from time to time. So according to Mandy's understanding, she thought Jesus was the only prophet. So the truth is, the block represents the progressive revelation. So let me tell the sequence of the progressive revelation so firstly was krishna moses zoroaster buddha christ muhammad the bab and bahaullah so as we all know from this story jesus wasn't the only one who came 2000 years ago so as a conclusion we can say the religion of God has many messengers. God will continue to send us messengers like Christ, Baha'u'llah, and, and etc. forever. We call this process as the progressive revelation. So I'd like to thank each and everyone who listened to my story about the progressive revelation. And once again, wishing all the Baha'is of the world joyous with one. Thank you. Halal Pa.